here tonight. Special KOF shout out to the homeboys at Dream Cancel. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Dream Cancel podcast. This is episode 113 of Dream Cancel Live. My name is Desmond, the administrator of DreamCancel.com. In this episode, we are welcoming 2020. It's a new year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much for watching and listening throughout 2019. We're going to talk and reflect upon 2019, and we're going to speculate and maybe set some goals, some expectations for 2020 in the KOF scene, SNK scene, FGC. And we have a couple people uh, to talk about that uh, with us, um, share with us um, their whole take on 2019 and things that they want to see in 2020. And there is a bunch of events that are going to be held um, early this year and actually within this month, next month, next uh, uh, couple months. And we want to uh, share with that with y'all. So, again, thank you all so much uh, for coming on. I know it's been a while since we had a podcast. Um, we're going to try to do these a little bit more regularly, but the most important thing is to play uh, KOF. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm glad a lot of people are, are doing that um, so far, especially in our Discord channel. But without further ado, I would like to introduce the discussion panel for this episode. And I would like to first introduce, we got DZ Kujaku, Kick Punch Block. What's good? Hey, what's up, Desmond? How's it going? Um, you know, back again. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Exactly. Good to have you. Good to have um, you always on the show. Really, really appreciate it. Really, really dope. Yeah. No indeed, indeed. And next up, we have uh, representing... Um, Lunar Phase uh, Productions. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm saying that uh, name cor- wrong. But uh, Mata, what's good? Hello. How's it? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. You can hear me, Marco. How you guys doing? Good, 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 man. Um, good to have you on there, man. Um, what's the full? <laughs> what's the full name of uh the productions um lunar phase productions what's just uh just, just go with lunar phase that's um literally that is the full name lunar phase productions but it depends on what we're using productions right. like our events live is our youtube so right just really we're just lunar phase right mm-hmm. okay good and uh just popping in we got marco to the polo. polo what's, what's going on you guys <laughs> oh man. What is up? What is up? What is up? Um, eating mac and cheese because that's all I can eat. <laughs> Sad boys. Yeah, you did say you was uh, cooking dinner, man. So yeah, it's good to have you on while you he are, got the uh, munching. You got the wisdom too, fat. That's what he got. Yeah, man. Ooh, how's that going so far, bro? And so far today is a whole lot better. Yesterday and the day before sucked so bad, but today it's back to normal. But I still have to eat soft foods. Oh man, I had I had six removed, dude. That was. That was interesting, man. It was six. Goddamn. Yeah, I had two lower front tooth behind my teeth that needed to be removed, and I had four like back teeth that was all the way in the back, and they weren't growing all the way. You know, so oh, I had. Oh wow. Yeah, I had to get them all out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But so I always feel for people when they say they have wisdom teeth yeah. out. You know. Gotcha. Hi, DZ. How you doing, girl? Hey, Mar- there he goes. <laughs> Eating that mac and cheese, girl. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm jealous. I actually need that uh, mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so yo, before we get to the discussion, I want to just like throw some uh, shout outs from when plugs in the air. Briefly talk about some past events, upcoming events, um, and let me know if there's anything that um, I skip or have skipped or needs to be um, mentioned, you know, because mm-hmm. there's, you know, a, a fair amount of depth in this scene. Um, so let's just shout out, uh, you know, if you want to get shirts, you can cancel dot com slash shop. If you want to join a Patreon to help us stay operational 
feel free uh, to visit our Patreon page. It'll be in the discussion, I mean, the uh, description section on the YouTube archive. And it might pop up every now and then in mm-hmm. the chat. Gotcha. Um, also, uh, the Dream Council Discord. Feel free to join us there. We have a lot of fun there. Always updating it and upgrading it as much as uh, we can. Mm-hmm. And uh, wait, are you smi- are you smiling to me, Marco? Or are you smiling? No, to I'm not. Oh, okay, okay. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay, all right. I was I was wondering what the like. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 we had, oh yeah, big thanks to any everybody that's helping us with the week. Um, really, really appreciate it. Um, ooh, 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 what is that? Some somebody uh, somebody scratching. Monta, is that you? Somebody scratching themselves with the mic. My bad. <laughs> I, I had to grab something. Like okay. That. All right. Cool. You idiot. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. If it, everybody could just um just uh, briefly mute yourselves um until like we kind of get into uh, discussion real quick. That way we won't hear all the background noise and you know um telling novellas and stuff in the background and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, um. All right. Next up, I want to share the uh. Results of KOF online tournament. This was the inclusion too, and this oh, was nice. uh, the um, oh oh Marco Marco. Can you mute yourself real quick, man, if you don't mind? I did. Okay, I right, agree. Um, yeah, this was a I think this was this beginners tournament. So this was the uh, standings right here, and we'll have links. And stuff in the description section on YouTube for free to uh, check that out. Really good tournament. I watched it live. And this was the assertion. This was a intermediate KOF uh, online tournament on Steam. These both both of these tournaments were held on Steam for KOF 14. And this was almost a, whew, a couple weeks ago, um, like one of the last few weeks of December. So big props to everyone that uh, showed up for these. And um, tournament that's coming up, Frosty Faustings, January uh, 17th and 18th, 2020, in uh, Illinois. Uh, we're going to post up a link real quick, post it up in the chat for people to observe and uh, check out. Anybody uh, going out there? Any one of y'all? Um, I will be there. I will. It's actually my first Frosty Falcon, so I'm actually kind of excited for it. Which are you planning on playing out there? Um, just just KOF 14 and Eunice for now. Um, I'll probably just play casuals and dabble with other stuff, but those two games are going to be my uh, my forefront. Oh, sweet! And just to let people know, I I do believe it is a uh, qualifier for the SNK World. Championship. I think it's only for Sam Show, though. Is it yes. only for Sam Show? It's, it's only, only for, for Samurai, Samurai Showdown. Show. Okay. All right. Great. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, next tournament that we would like to share. Well, these are going to be a bunch of tournaments in <laughs> in February. So um, I think one of them is uh, one of these are going to be. Oh, no. This is all February, man. <laughs> for SNK, okay, so, yeah. Yeah, man. Frosty Frosty 12. Um, Lunar Bout, Winter Showdown 7, um, Vegas hey, Cup. Hyperdrive. All, Hyperdrive 2, you know, as well. Yeah, this is all going down, man, in February, dude. It's February is hot. And um, Hyperdrive is a SNK qualifier, for oh, yeah. those wondering. Yep, it is. Yep, there's a little, little emblem right there, you know, letting people know. Um, also, um, Oh, the 29th for Vegas Cup is that's a leap day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right, all right, cool. So go ahead and uh, either if you if you're not going to any of these, stream them all. Uh, if you <laughs> if you're going uh, to all these at the same time, good luck. Um, I know for myself, I'll be hitting up Lunar about. That's the only thing um, I'll be going to. Nice. Um, so, oh yeah. I forgot to uh, ask this uh, in advance, Monta, but um, is it okay if we um, play the uh, the trailer? 
Let's go right ahead. All right. We're going to play the trailer, and we'll be right back. So, you defeated Billy and Raiden. I am impressed. Very impressed. I suppose I'll have to dispose of you myself as a memento to Jeff Bogard. Geese, I'll never forgive you. He also made all the class. Oh, he made right. a good portion of the climax of the night trailers too. Yeah, what was Got the name? Him. What was the name of that person uh, that made the uh, trailer monster again? His Twitter is it should be Kami Coma, Kami Co like Kami as in K M I as in God, and then Coma as in the multiple character Coma. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. great. All right, cool. Um, all right, let's get into this main topic. Um, if we could, if uh, sure. if you're not speaking. Or not planning to speak, just uh, turn these glasses on first. Um, if you could, that way we won't get any uh, extra background noise of litness and fun that I kind of <laughs> wish I was a part of. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yo, um, let's definitely talk about uh, 2019. And um, damn, I thought I thought 2019 was a pretty interesting year um anyone had any uh i would say goals that they uh tackled in 2019 uh, i'll go like yeah um 2019 amazing like um besides like you know going to these majors and tournaments like the neo joe world tour i flew to taiwan and i competed that's the one that's once a lifetime opportunity to have so i was grateful about that um getting married um mm -hmm. the first lunar phase that miyamata did that was probably in my opinion one of the best events that i was able to like you know participate in yes we had over like i believe what's the number monta like 50 60 people Around 65 exactly and it was all for kof and like samsha was he even like as big as it is now so that was amazing so I like how, like, you know, the KO community, in my opinion, I think it's getting bigger and better. And I also want to give shout outs to Manta and his team because they're the ones that revived literally SNK back in New York. So I can't really say much. 2019, in my opinion, it was a good year. I liked it. All right, cool. Um, Manta, uh, how was 2019 for you, man? Look, like you had a, a good year, man. Like, you, you were just. You know, events just like back to back ran consistently. No complaints from what I heard. <laughs> how how was it for, um, for you from your perspective? Mata? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? My dog decided to go outside and I didn't catch that last part. Oh, I was asking about uh, 2019. Like, it seemed like from. What I seen, you had a pretty good year. You had a lot oh of consistent uh, uh, events and whatnot. Um, how, how was it for you? How, how did you feel about 2019? It was definitely a build-up year, for sure. Because, obviously, in our phase K was the different type of event that we did. It was probably, you know, it was a build-up to what we would do in the future. Yes. I would say especially what happened a second stream that became something of a staple around the middle of the year until the end of the year. Something I want to keep doing in the 2020. Being a local with a second stream is <laughs> logistically, it's amazing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. 
Um, it kind of, it almost feels weird to think that, like, because I had some people on commentary, they ended up getting more gigs in the future, too. Ooh, okay. Like, you have, like, Aru. Nobody, not that many people outside of the SK community really knew who he was in the beginning of 2019. Mm. Then he got hooked on Fox Special. And what Samurai showed on Summit came out, everybody knew, knows who he is. He get, got that Evo gig. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So obviously, I mean, I mean, obviously it wasn't just like me. Obviously he put in all the all the work, but it almost kind of felt like kind of like a ricochet effect. Like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> what did I start by accident? <laughs> right. Even like Rome's getting gigs too now. I mean, I don't know. I feel the that. I mean, I like Five Special too as a game, so that was the other thing. But yes, I felt the being able to kind of expand was probably the best thing that I did. 2019 for lunar phase okay. and logistically everything you started running a lot better too okay yeah man so just yeah, yeah build up here and then match arenas started getting blown up also i see the dual stream working with more people working at majors it's been pretty good 2019 was a very good year work yeah, it, it looked like, like I said earlier, it looked like it was for you, man. Like, you know, so congrats. And I know you're going to keep things pushing um, well into 2020 for sure, you know. Yeah, yeah we, we have, have a lot of, of I have, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, trying to work with different ideas right now um, that we're going to test out for our locals. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. Um I guess, I guess if I am going to, like, spill a little bit of the beans, a little bit of the beans, I'm just, right now, we're pretty much testing it out with Uniclear. It's going to be kind of going to more or less be your guinea pig. And we're thinking about maybe trying to do, like, smaller leagues in the Northeast. Hmm. Like, okay. ranking leagues, and then maybe that could build up to special types of events, kind of similar to Battle of the Strongest or something like that. Right. Or like, uh, stuff like that. I mean... That yeah, and I can't, at least um, me and my streamer, Datagram, shout out to Datagram, we're also thinking of ways that we can help showcase newer players. We're like up and coming players who maybe don't get on stream or get exposure as often. Right. So that's the other project we want to, that's the other thing we want to also do. So we're just working towards like making our locals better at the moment. Just, like, different ideas as to what we could do to spice things up. Okay. Anyway, let me, like, let me get this dog upstairs. He's going he's gonna to keep crying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yo, DZ, how was your uh, 2019 overall, man? Uh, 2019 was, it was pretty interesting. So, I mean, starting, I mean, well, honestly, my accomplishments for, like, that whole, I guess, block of time um kind of started in like late 2018 and kind of like spilled over into like most of 2019 like uh i, I took home i took home a medal for uh for um sk heroine from ceo Daku, so that felt really good and then i felt like i kind of rode that hype into um into lunar phase in february um didn't didn't do amazing but just the, just being and just being uh there with so many people that Share the same passion for SNK games, kind of just like springboard the whole thing with me um, writing articles for Dream Cancel. Um, later on the year, I actually ended up being one of Kick Punch, uh, Kick Punch Box uh, organizers. So now I have a much more active role with the team, the community. Um, so overall, I would say 2019 is pretty good to me. It, it, it had its ups and downs, but overall, I, I'm. Oh crap! Cutting out just a little bit. Hold on, I, I think, think my I think my router shit in the bucket. There it goes. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I mean, just becoming an organizer for my team, uh, doing more to interact with the community. I think it. I think it kind of shaped up my 2019 pretty nicely. Oh great, great, cool man. Yeah, like, like I was um, saying to uh, Monta, you know, it kind of looked like he had a good year, and it looked like you had a good year as well. So that's that's good. 
you know what I'm saying? It's always uh, good to see. So, yep, congrats for a good 2019. We're going to get into a little bit more specifics uh, with uh, 2019. And I kind of want to start with um, with Marco. So, um, Marco, if you can hear me. Uh, what up? What up? So, I, I want to talk a little bit about gameplay in, uh, in, in KOF. So, what did you okay. learn throughout the year about your gameplay when you were at these different events? Um, offline and or playing people online like what what did you kind of like learn about yourself when playing kof throughout 2019 throughout 2019 that's a good question um all right um i guess my gameplay changed a lot when you look at like videos back in the day i was just jumping trying to get a hit and like not having any defense like uh this year and also like mostly this year and also last year Help me understand more about, like, you know, playing calm, patient, and how to handle my nerves. That's one of the things that really helped me is learn how to handle my nerves. And, you know, pressure and everything else is also adaptation. You know, um, so playing with different people really helped out a lot offline. But also playing online was also fun because it was good practice. So, gameplay, I'll be honest, like, my fundamentals got better. Mm-hmm. My reactions got better, and I'm very, like, you know, very cautious in terms of spacing and how to whip punish. So I think that was very, very helpful. And playing with different, like, you know, going to these tournaments and these, like, majors, you play different types of players. What are their styles? Are they more aggressive? Are they more lame? Are they just going all in? You determine that, and after that, you make the ad- adaptation, so... Um, I say when you go to tournaments and majors and even playing, like, online, you, you learn a lot. It's just a matter about how do you apply it. That, that takes time, though. Right. Because, mm-hmm. okay. you know, we can watch, we can watch videos. Now, we can do that in tournament, but can you really do that in tournament? But yeah, can you even handle your nerves? Right. Like, stuff like that takes time. But, mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. No, I was just agreeing with you, man. That's, yeah. That was good. Word. Um, DZ, what, what about you, man? What did you learn about your gameplay this year? I mean, 2019. <laughs> well, I mean, for 2019, um, my gameplay it, it it's improved. I, I I'd normally normally you have to like bash me over the head to get me to admit it, but I, I would say it improved. Um, mostly just kind of taking a step back and and assessing a situation. Like normally, I would just go, you know, balls to the walls and just and just do whatever I felt like I wanted to do. But I mean. Just slowing it down and 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 taking a look at it, 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 it kind of helped me improve. Also, going back to older KOFs uh, consistently, it kind of gave me ideas on how to improve my game in 14. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, um, you know, looking at similar situations across multiple games and finding unique solutions for them kind of helps me a lot. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean I'm feeling pretty good going into 2020. Um, it's mostly because when I go to these events, like, my goal, my, I, I'd like to start small. So, like, I, my goal isn't like, oh, I want to, I'm going to win the whole thing. But it's just like, all right, let's see how far we can get, and then, and then I'll go to the next event after that. Let's see if I can go further than that, mm. and you know, step by step until eventually, I, I don't know, I end up in grand final somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well said. Well said. Um, if I could direct the question back to myself, I, I would say one thing I kind of learned about my gameplay is that uh yeah playing different kinds of people helps a lot and i kind of understood like you know the reason why like i have kind of like bad nerves in certain situations you know mainly you know either playing against certain people or in uh, certain events um yeah I, I just pretty much learned that like you know the more you not just play but the more you understand the game and the more you uh, I would say um, take the time to analyze and um, try to uh, practice the things that you can practice that helps a lot and that that would actually reduce a little bit of the nervousness but sometimes that that shit can't go away you know what I'm saying sometimes you just have to just like learn how to deal with it so that's one thing I learned is that sometimes you, you can't fight the nerves or anxiety to go away or subside, you have to just use it to your advantage, you know, and then 
frequently be in that spot or, or area that you feel when you feel nervous or when you feel anxious and then try to find out like which ways or which points of it that it makes you kind of break as a player you know like when combos start dropping or when you become like extremely predictable or um when you just like don't like capitalize you know always kind of look at like the certain points of when you're playing of like you know when i'm kind of like really just like faltering you know and then try to put myself in those areas or those uh, positions more often that way whenever i do feel nervous and anxious i kind of know what to do already or i can you know not you know perform badly or just like um what people call it like a choke <laughs> pretty much so yeah that's that's what i learned um in uh 2019 and it's something that i've always kind of you know tried to develop throughout you know my gameplay for x amount of years and stuff like that you know what i'm saying because yeah different people have different like thresholds for like nerves and stuff and, and some people just are more nervous than others you know, some people have anxiety of, of different kinds. You know, some people have severe anxiety. Some people have like a little bit, you know. So it's always good to kind of like know and understand like where that is. And if you have it and you have to like admit that you have it and stuff like that. Um, one question I want to ask. This is away from gameplay. Um, what do you all think? What did we do right as a community in 2019? And what did you think that we should improve upon you know or or that we didn't do right in 2019 can, can i can i start this one? Oh, go actually? go go right ahead man take it uh, so one thing that we got right as a community and i know this is probably like mm, so it's still kind of a hot button um we started holding snk accountable for their action Ooh. or in action and i'm gonna and the reason i say that is because let me set the record straight that Literally every single person in this community wants SNK to do well. I, I, no matter what viewpoint you have about a particular game or topic or something, or just tournament, whatever, everybody wants SNK to do well. So let me just set that straight before I say anything else. But that doesn't mean that we have to become complacent and just accept subpar uh, organization. And I'm talking about the, the World Tour in particular. Ooh, yes. Um, it, 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 it has massive room for improvement, but they're not going to improve anything if they don't know that something is wrong. So I think a lot of the pillars in the community finally speaking up and telling uh, SNK or just speaking about it directly, you know, in public on Twitter or Facebook or wherever, just, hey, I'm not happy about how this is going. And, and I mean, it led to some infighting with the community, like, okay, well, your region has more stops than ours, but... At the end of the day, if none of the stops are really run great, the number doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I would say that's a huge step because I think I really think SK took notice of it, and uh, we'll hopefully try to, you know, get that get that straightened out going forward. Man, well said, man. I I want to say I almost forgot about that, <laughs> but I'm I'm glad you uh you brought that up again, man. Because yeah, that that was a very important thing. Um. And, and and good thing that we did, you know, is that we, you know, we spoke up about, you know, the things that we didn't really like, you know, from the, uh, war, uh, I was going to say World Tour, the, the World Championship and stuff like that, the way it was handled, you know, even going all the way to, like, things about, like, the uh, Neo Geo World Tour, you know, people spoke up, uh, you know, about that. But it's all, like, like you said, it's all in, in good faith good conscious it's you know for constructive criticism is not you know for like bashing or anything it's no hate it's like yo we want y'all to do well and these are some necessary actions or recommendations for you to do well you know what i'm saying um marco what, what about you man what, what did you think that the community did well in 2019 and things that we didn't do well Is he still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right, so the question is, what did we do well 2019? Or yes. just in general? Okay. In 2019, yeah, as a community. Um, 
I will say, honestly, one of the things that I feel like, you know, we did perfectly well was increasing stream time for KOF. I think, honestly, like, um, giving everyone the opportunity to look at the look at KOF, try it out. I think that was very helpful, like, from myself, Rome, uh, Kenshi, yourself, Elke, and now we have Party Barge. Like, it's just interesting how everyone's coming all together and, like, we're getting different crowds, different individuals coming all together just to play the game for the love of the game. And, you know, I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. In terms of what uh, we also did, um, DZ said the majority of it. I do not want to say anything because I don't want to get banned, but DZ's <laughs> right. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But, like, I'm glad that, um, you know, people, you know, said their opinions and what they had to say for SNK. I just kind of wish that um, they would be able to differentiate Sam Show players from KOF. Because a lot of times with the tour, it was a Sam Show that complained. And then it's like, oh, Sam Show KOF, you guys are always complaining. I'm like, no, 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 no. So that's one of the things I'm hoping that, you know, this year things will get better, have a better understanding. And but overall, that's all. Okay. Well mm-hmm. said. Well said. Uh, Mata, if you are back, um, uh, what did you think we did right as a community, man, uh, in 2019 and things that we didn't do right, <laughs> in your opinion, in 2019? Yeah, I think the SNK community is doing perfectly fine as of 2019. I mean, in 2019. Um, it pretty, at least in New York, I mean, I don't know. I don't know other places. At least in New York, it pretty much grew in terms of exposure and and numbers. Really, um, I think in terms of I don't know. I think overall, we just keep doing a good job. Like Marco said, everybody started streaming a lot more often. So that kind of that that just got me interested in playing more because I looked at it like, oh, there's a lobby every day. Like literally, Marco's not like well, Marco was Marco still on Monday. You still on Mondays? anyway like yes yes i am fam yeah like so we have like marco on mondays like party bars is tuesdays rome sometimes is wednesdays elke always is fridays you know you have like a lobby every day so like, oh, pretty much almost every day and i do thursdays but it's like old school kof games right but we, we literally have it every day exactly that's probably one of the things that i thought was very good because i feel like a lot of other fighting communities don't have something like that at least not necessarily mm-hmm. A lot of other ones you have to kind of just go on Discord and try to get lucky. <laughs> try to get lucky, like hopefully somebody answers. Yeah. But um, I think we did. I think SK community has been doing that especially well. Even like Samurai Showdown, like you have people like Lord Jimmy Bones and Rome streaming a lot. Mm-hmm. Back. Um, Lord Jimmy Bones still streams Samurai Showdown. Mm-hmm. So you still have people streaming the games and everything. So that's good. Streaming, stream is pretty much one of the best ways just to bring people to play your game. Yeah. So I think um, the fact that everybody was just streaming as much as they were, or slash R, well, really they are, is probably one of the best things the SK community did. Also holding them accountable. Also, I mean, yeah, holding them accountable for the lag, of course, was that was a good quick fix. They actually listened. And I hope they just keep... I mean, I hope that devs in general hope listen more to the community to the degree. Um... Hopefully they see us more as, you know, hopefully they see us more as a market they can profit of by giving us certain things like good net code. Like in the future, instead of just looking at it, to- looking at it like on Japanese end of things, because it's kind of what it is, because kind of what it is at this point, because like that net code works fine in Japan where everything's just, you know, it's a lot, <laughs> this isn't as big, but here obviously it's a problem because <laughs> their infrastructure isn't as good and it's a much bigger country. I don't know. Um, of course, that kind of sidetracked a little bit, but um, I think the SK community did a very good job. Even the French Red community, the French, because I'm a part of that community too. They, we, we've done an amazing job in general. Um, Climax and I was an amazing. Climax and I was a very family oriented event, kind of like how LPSK was, but just at a much bigger scale because it was a, literally a major in a hotel, like in an actual hotel ballroom and everything. Um, and even even like a game like Melty Blood, we w- started like a twenty at the end of twenty eighteen. I think there was only like I was the only guy who even played the game to us to a degree in New York. Mm-hmm. And then now in 
2019 there's at least like we literally had like a 23 man local for melty blood at 20 <laughs> like a 20 at the end of 2019 that's insane and then same thing with Eunice. I mean, Eunice just kept growing. So, like, the average, again, I started averaging, like, Street Fighter numbers for Eunice, which is, to me, was also crazy. I'm like, well, I'm getting, like, 20-something, 30 heads every every time I host. Hmm. And then everybody's just telling me to play the game and, and get better at it. So, shout-outs to the French Road community. I guess the only thing I'd want to see is for Melty TOs to start getting more standardized equipment instead of using, lap, instead of using random people's laptops. But that's just a nitpick that I that I have in general. Only because I want to see certain things like only because I like I like seeing things streamlined. So I wanna see games like games that are in PC for fighting games to be streamlined streamlined a bit better than they are right now. Question that's for you. Better. Um about you said the French bread community. What what um what did they do to kind of make their community a bit more consistent as far as like um, showing up to those events and how can like you know the kof community or the snk community in different parts of the u.s learn from that like what did they do personally i think um i think at least in new york i think we'd be good um at least for lp the thing is a lot of our stronger players are very accommodating and even just us in general, we're really accommodating. So people just feel like people feel good when they come to our events. That's what that's what people tell me. I'm not even like making this up. That's literally what people tell me. And I think part of it is just like people so again, our top play, basically a lot of our stronger players are willing to help out our newer players and just like sit down with them and play like long sets with them and just talk to them about what, what they could do if they have any questions, or even if they don't have any questions, they pretty much like tell them like, okay, you could be doing this, try it out. I think essentially some of the mentoring probably helped. And just like, because it was a very inviting environment that helped a lot too. I think, I don't know, I feel like it was that, I feel like that for sure. And then I guess just the love for the game and the exposure helped out a lot too, like in the grand scheme of things. And then obviously once Evo announced that Eunice was in Eunice was in Evo, that everybody was just interested. So they everybody started looking at us. Mm. Okay. So definitely that too. But at least the LP, from what I observed, it was just like just the environment, like a good environment. And I think even like with SNK games, that kind of happened a bit too. I know some players who, at least with five special. The very least, and even like ninety, even like ninety-eight UM, a lot of like people who play other games, they tried, they want to try them out, and they actually want to. Some of them like, like I know one Melty Blood player who plays a place five special every time that it's there. He's actually not bad, and I know that like, yeah, the K community here is also very inviting. So I don't think I think it just needs a bit more time to maybe get like more of a foothold in that sense. But even then, I think. I think yeah, I mean, I think I think I think 2019 was a good year to kind of come to more or less come back with it, and then like in 2020 can only get better, especially with now that we have like a bunch more SNK events that are just like SNK oriented. They, I think that could help too, just to help bring more, just to help kind of like show people, show more people kind of what we're about. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Well said. Um, I would say uh, for myself, what we did right as a community, and this goes right back to what a couple of y'all were uh, mentioning before, was our streaming activity. I thought it was really, really good that we covered pretty much a whole week <laughs> of uh, streaming. You know, we got somebody for Monday, we got somebody for Tuesday, we got somebody for Wednesday, we have somebody for thursday and then you know we got friday you know elky dory and you know sometimes uh this uh, streaming uh channel would uh you know um pre-show his stream you know what i'm saying um that's one thing i, I kind of want to see a little bit more is people kind of like rating other people's uh streams and, and whatnot but I, I understand that takes a lot of understanding like when certain people stream at the exact 
time and stuff like that? Because sometimes people like to move around their time slots and, you know, just to kind of gauge, um, you know, consistency and how many viewers they can get if they stream at this time and that time and stuff like that, you know. Um, so I, I definitely understand that. But overall, I mean, just having, you know, people just streaming almost every day, um, that's very good. I also like the fact that a lot of those people that streamed, how nice and accommodating they were to new people that stream, even if they only stream like the game once, you know, like how nice they were and, you know, inviting and, and welcoming they were to them, you know, to the community and stuff like that. I thought that's um, very good. Um, also agree with um, y'all when y'all, you know, said we spoke up, you know, towards SNK, you know, about the championship. That's that's very good. You know, it's always good to speak your mind about um, many different things. Um, you know, big ups to the Sam Show community, um, you know, for just uh, really just like hyping the game up as much as possible, uh, streaming as much as, uh, you know, they can. Um, that's really, really good. Um, as far as like things that I didn't like or care for, um, hmm, or, or things that we should approve upon. I guess we can get upon that a little later, but um, hmm, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I think like people stream more online than they stream at their locals, you know. So I guess like the local scene for like 14 kind of faltered a little bit depending on where you are you know what i'm saying um yeah i, I definitely think it, it kind of subsided a lot but i guess you know if you could play the game online and the game has good net code and it's easy to stream then i mean that's a, a pretty good uh substitute for a bit but it's always good to have you know your locals be uh shared and streamed that way it can uh, inspire other people to stream their locals even if it's just like you know, two people, you know what I'm saying? I know Kenshi, he does that sometimes. He plays with, like, his his roommate, you know what I'm saying? I, and to me, that quantifies as, like, <laughs> a local, you know, even though, like, it's not at a you know a venue or and it's not, like, a big amount of people and stuff like that. So I, I did feel like, yeah, like, the, the local scene for KOF in certain areas kind of um, lessened a little bit. Um, oh, another thing that I did like, um, I did like the fact that a lot of people um, started playing 13 again. Um uh, I thought, you know, that was really, really dope. So for people that, that are playing um, games that they really, really like, like, you know, 13 and, and even like O2 and O2UM, FE, um, you know, that that's really, really good. Uh, I would say, yeah, just just keep up the, the good work, you know. Um, also, I liked how accommodating people were towards a lot of uh, Smash players. You know, when, when Terry got in Smash, like people were very uh you know um welcoming and accommodating even though there was some trolls and stuff that didn't really understand terry I, being I, a smash yep I'm le i legit looked at my switch like just now and it, i completely forgot that terry got smash. <laughs> well no let, let me correct myself i didn't forget but it was like in a bit in the back of my mind but um yeah yeah so believe it or not um that was actually pretty big for SNK. Um, mm -hmm. I even got a, I even got a couple of, um, I even got one of my local friends. He, he ended up playing, um, he ended up playing 97 with me one time and he was like, oh man, like I wish it was as good in Smash. And I'm like, he kind of is just not in the same capacity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, big props to everyone that, um, was just very, uh, Welcome and accommodating to those players. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know how much we retain some of those players. I don't know if, if some of them are still kind of like coming in. Um, but still, I thought that was very good. And I think that's kind of really it. I might think of more things throughout the show. Um, I do have like a technical question. This is mainly towards uh, um, Marco. So Marco... You've been, uh, you know, streaming quite a bit in 2019. What did you learn about streaming overall? Like, you know, because like now your streams are like crisp. They sound good. They look good. You're mm -hmm. growing. Like, what did you learn throughout 2019 that can like help somebody out in 2020? Well, it's good to know that, you know, you have actual like, you know, friends in the community that help you learn how to set everything up. So shout outs to um, Manta, Rashikal, Elki. Everybody, you know, and like um, streaming has been great. It's um, it's a lot of work, 
But once you get used to it, it's definitely worth it. And like for me to just, you know, showcase like, you know, KOF to the scene, to the community, because it did so much to me, means everything. So yeah, thank you for so much for the, I know the streams are crisp. Shout out to Elki Dory for helping me and Rome himself for like some of the equipment I should get. So it's been very, very good. And I'm hoping to like continue streaming and take it from there. Or for sure, man, for sure. That, that yeah, yeah, because yeah, your your streams just look they they look good, man. They they look great. They're um, yeah. nice quality and everything. Like what was like the uh, um yeah, what was like the the turning point, man? Like like what was like the the light bulb that kind of like ignited that made you just like really get a good grasp on like streaming, you know, consistently. Well, my wife got me a PC, so that was one. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh oh man, having a good PC. <laughs> That that always helps, man. And after that, you know, I always was like, hmm. There was, like, so many games, like, in PC. I was like, man, I haven't played 13, but I really do. But I don't want to get, like, a PS2 and everything else. But, hell, having a PC, you have KOF 13. And what surprised me is that people still play these games till this day. Like, you're always going to find a game. You're always going to find availability. So it's a good thing to have. And um, PC, streaming, still got ways to go. Like, it's not, uh, one day maybe Monta could show me the ways I had to stream, like, the way Datogram does, or maybe he can. But, yeah, it's, like, a good work in progress, and yeah, I'll keep doing it until I can't do it no longer. Any questions about, like, you know, technical, Axel Monta, Elkidori, mm-hmm. Rashigal, Rome himself, because they all legit really helped me in getting all this together. And even yourself, uh, Desmond. <laughs> Oh, no problem, you know? Yeah, I'm just, like, stuffing my face with ice cream because that's time right now. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So why don't we kind of start pushing in more into what we expect to see in 2020. So let's see. <laughs> um, so hmm, I kind of want to ask, like, what... I won't say goals or, or plans, but like, what what things do y'all want to like work on um, in 2020? It could be your like, it could be gameplay wise. It can be uh, events that you want to go to. Um, what are what are some things you want to prove upon for 2020 compared to uh, you know 2019? Easy, um, you got uh, anything you want to share for 2020? Um, let's see, for 2020, um. Mostly just 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 refining my craft, like just to make it, cause cause um I, I think I said this on a, on a previous um Dream Cancel Live, but now that we know that fifteen is a hundred percent on its way and could be relatively soon, uh, I'm keeping my basically keeping my nails sharp in uh fourteen just to kind of like even if fifteen doesn't play like fourteen pretty much at all, there's there's a sense of familiarity that you can put with KOS games. So uh, not just 14 either, so I'm playing like a ton of 14. I'm playing 98, 97, 02. It's, it's, it's like the more addict I can get at KOF as a series, I feel like I'll be better prepared to hit the ground running when 15 comes around. Um, between that and so many SNK focused events upcoming, um, like I said before, this is my first Rossi Fasting, so I'm excited for that. Lunar Bounce right around the corner for that. Um, I don't know if I can make Vegas Cup. Um, that's gonna be it's gonna be relatively tough. I have to juggle uh, juggle my finances to see how if I can pull that off. But you also have um, you also have events this year like Combo Breaker, and um, you know I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that a uh, CEO or a CEO Taku like whatever the whatever the latest. Uh, like SNK, not even just gave up, but like SNK game in general at the moment, they're probably going to end up hosting that because I know they had Sam show at uh, CO Taku last year. Um, so, you know, like there's a lot, that's a, it's a good and a bad thing, but there's a lot of events that people can go to. It's a bad thing because a lot of times people can spread themselves too thin, mm-hmm. but it's also a really good thing because there's there, almost, almost every weekend, like unless it's like some crazy major holiday, which... Honestly, I can't even say it's an excuse anymore because we had any seed on Thanksgiving last year. But that aside, it's like um, there's a, there's an event almost every weekend in different parts of the country or even the world. So no matter where you are, if you have the means to travel, you can make it to one of these events. So I think that's a really good thing for not even just the SNK community, but the FC at large. Cool, man. Thanks for sharing. Very well said, as always. Uh, Marco, 
what about you, man? What would you like to uh, improve upon for yourself for uh, this year, 2020? Um, well, for I think honestly, for uh, this year, I'm going to take more of an approach and try to build the community that we have now, primarily the East Coast scene. <laughs> Like, um, we do have an East Coast SNK Discord, and there's many members, and it's interesting how many members that came in for uh, Sam's show are now trying KOF, so I also want to, you know, build that. In terms of, like, you know, maybe streaming, probably do some tutorials in terms of characters, because I get a lot of, you know, requests online, but I never get the chance to do it. It just goes one ear and out the other, so I'm going to try <laughs> and do that. In terms of tournaments, uh... DZ, I will be at Frosty Faustings, so we're definitely going to be drinking lots of wine. Hey, let's, all... let's get it. <laughs> yes. Um, the game I'll be entering is uh, KOF, and for SMPs, I'll be entering Sam Show, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but other than that, like, I'm going to be Frosty Faustings, Luna Bell, Hyperdrive, I don't know. Uh, Hyperdrive is just going to be a little bit tricky, so we'll see how that goes, and Vegas Cup should be a definite. But other than that, Community building. That's going to be my main goal. I'll be helping out also Monta when he has SNK events because I like the fact that he does SNK every single every single uh, two weeks or so. But I think that's a great opportunity to like to meet old players, new players, get them all together, and just keep building. Cool. Right on. That sounds mm -hmm. good, man. That sounds so Thank good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Monta. What, what about you, man? Um, what do you? What are you ready to uh, improve upon for yourself for uh, 2020? Because you, you seem like you got a pretty good base already, man. Like, what, what are some things you want to just, like, you know, ultimately just, like, improve? Trying to make sure we always got to – trying to make sure that pretty much at every local we have, like, two streams. Um, that's pretty – probably the main thing <laughs> that I want for LP locals. Because we don't always have access to Arturo. Shoutouts to NYC for every, by the way. Um, we don't know we have access to Arturo or Spooky or someone like that, so I just want to always have like some type of backup or even just have like a second streamer at um, LP. Even even if it's just like me doing something poverty, I just logistically I want to work towards getting everything faster, more streamlined. Um, among other things, um, maybe looking into getting footage again, trying to get more footage that maybe you won't get normally, either through, like, like one thing my Melty guys do, they like to, they always like the Periscope streams. <laughs> they love to do that until, like, maybe even just, like, recording certain sets off stream and then uploading them. Ooh, Want to do a little bit more of that. Um, I'm going to actually do that at Lunar Belt. So all of our pools, I'm trying to, I'm trying to have capture cards for... Trying to have at least like one capture card per pool, and I want to record certain sets throughout our um, throughout the pools that aren't getting streamed. Hmm. That's actually one thing that I would need to check up on. Um, the main thing is making sure that um, obviously I want to spice things up at our locals by having either different le but mostly by having like trying thinking of like maybe trying to do like a league. Within um, the Northeast for Uniclear, just starting with Uniclear. And maybe having them culminate to like a bigger event later, like in May or something. That's kind of some of the things that I'm thinking about. Also, maybe trying to do something with intermediate, like beginner and intermediate players to try to get them more exposure, also. Even exposure to just being on stream, I think that would just be good. Mm -hmm. So when they go to majors, they're not as nervous. Um, what else? I'm trying to streamline Melt a little better in other PC games. Like, one thing that we're actually doing at Lunar Bell, we have to run pretty much 98 UMFE on PC. Because besides, like, one board that's apparently lying around somewhere in New York, um, Obese has it, apparently. There's no real board for that game here in New York City. So I need to just find way, pretty much like find ways where I can have like PC setups that are kind of as streamlined, maybe not as streamlined as consoles, but similar enough to consoles that we're not having too many issues or any issues at all. What is O2UM being played on again? O2UM, we actually do have boards in New York. Okay. So we do we do have arcade boards. 
Can you um, can you is, plug in uh, like arcade sticks to these boards or? Yes. All right, great, cool. You can plug in anything you want. Great. Oh, Pat, dude, awesome. Um, the only thing you might not have are macros, but you can. I can live without macros. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can you can yeah. play. I'm pretty sure you can play pad or whatever on them. Cool. Also, the, the even the cabinets at next level, they also have undamped converters installed into them, so you can literally plug in your stick the same way that um, I don't know if you know Brooklyn video games. They have those as well. they pretty much have the same setup as Brooklyn video games. You can plug in your stick into the cabinet. And you don't have to. You don't have to play with the bad tops, or with the stick that's provided in the cab. Mm, you can okay. just play with your own stick. <laughs> um, shoutouts to Cruise, Cruise Link. I love that dude. He's like the best, the best dude ever when it comes to like any tech or like any equipment. He's the best. Um, in terms of other things I want to do, I mean. I want to do more five special events. I know, want to do more things for five special. I want to do more things for older SNK games like 98 UM and 02 UM. Mm-hmm. So, like, one thing I'm trying to do in 2020, I'm trying to rotate KOF games, have like a different KOF game every local. Kind of in anticipation for 15, but also it's because every single KOF game is different. <laughs> and it's just so it's just fun to rotate them because everybody, I, for the most part, the SNK community likes to play. All, if not most, like most, if not all of their games, like all the, I mean, most, if not all of the um, SK games that come out. Mm. So I feel like ro- rotating those at LP would be good. And then I also want to work more at majors too, just to get more experience with that. And the only major that I can, that I know for sure that I'm working at is Legacy later in April. If you haven't heard from that one, that's an event that's ran by PAG Virgo in um, Atlantic City. So he's trying to run essentially a b- very big event over there in Atlantic City later in April. So I'm not working there, and then I might try to work Michigan Masters. And overall, I just want to work more at um, majors, maybe. Obviously, I'm doing these regional type events at next level. And then there's also the new venue that opened up at OS, so maybe I could do something over there. But um, ideally, just working towards maybe ha- maybe being able to get the experience to run a major at some point. And that's definitely not this year. Maybe, probably not next year, but definitely trying to do that maybe within the next like five to six years or something. I don't know, maybe sooner, maybe later. Just one experience. <laughs> Let's hope, Monta, you don't have, like, you know, you're not married, have kids, and have, like, a million dollars, so let's hope. <laughs> I mean, if I have a million dollars, the major's happening sooner. Okay. Now, if I get married, I'm still doing the major. You're going to have to hold that. <laughs> 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 you're going to have to stay with the... Oh, quick question, Monta. Are we okay. still being vendors for uh, Defend the North? Because we were Salt Mia's benders. <laughs> Are we still hoping. being benders to Defend the North? Are we still helping Salt Mia with her uh, shop at Defend the North? Depends on if they're having me work Defend the North. I'm not sure if they're having me work Defend the North. Oh, okay. Um, I did get hit up to potentially do something. Well, it was more like him asking me questions on okay. a certain game. But um, now that Kumite kind of took over, I don't even know what's going on with Defend yeah. the North. Well, that's a good thing. It is a good uh, thing. But I know we not. got. I know. I know we got off top, big Desmond. Our bad. <laughs> oh man, I was. I mean, I was it, hey, it, this it, is it, this is uh relevant information, man. I mean, that's, that's fine. yeah. Uh, Kumate took. Um, there was an announcement after, like I believe, the Street Fighter Finals that Kumate is now taking over Defend the North. They're going to be in charge of uh running the tournaments, majors, make sure everything's on time, and you know, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh man, taking over the logistics. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, it's funny oh. that y'all bringing mm-hmm. up that man. Um, about defending North. I was actually gonna ask y'all like, what was y'all favorite events, and what was an event that you felt needed definite improvement? And I was starting to think about the, you know, defending North, man. <laughs> you oh, know, uh, I mean, the North, hands down. No other. That tournament was complete shit. That was just terrible. I, I mean, felt bad for the competitors. I felt bad for. The TOs, I felt bad for everybody. Like, you went there and you just, just wanted to, like, you know, die. It was really that bad. It, it was like you went into a room and you had, like, the Resident Evil basement theme playing, the oh bad my. one. Wow. Yeah. That's. that's... <laughs> wow. Damn. We're, not, we're, we're being yeah, honest. We're not, we're not joking around. This is exactly what happened. It's crazy. Right. 
Um, it was yeah. definitely, it was definitely a blow up. Yeah. You know, and no, like, in in all terms, it was a blow up. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of like. Um, uh, majors, yep. best majors. I'm going to just go regional stuff like that. The best regional that I think went well was Monte. I gotta say it, Lunar Phase. Like I don't think anything went wrong except the fact that people registered for eight games that took law. But other than that, I think. But, but you know what? what you know what? That's just like that's just like the judicial branch of any government. Now we have the Vicky clause. Oh yeah. The Vicky clause states that you have a limit in your tournament. Otherwise you are going to logistically want to shoot yourself. Yeah, like um <laughs> Yeah, that's true, that's true. That's why we have a four game limit, the Vicky clause. Mm-hmm. So that's one. I think in terms of like majors, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Combo break is always an amazing amazing major, but ECT actually did it for me. That major was amazing. I actually had a good time at East Coast Throwdown. Like, the way how it was run, like, to me personally, like, the tournaments that they had, everything was ran smooth. Uh, Combo Breaker... I'm not gonna lie, Combo Breaker is also an amazing event, and... Okay, okay, I lied. Combo Breaker is the best uh, tournament to go to. Combo Breaker, East Coast Throwdown, and uh, Frosty Faustings. Like, any tournament in Chicago, for the looks of it, is, like, the best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, cool. well said. Well said, man. Um, yeah. Thanks for uh, for <laughs> you know sharing uh, you know the details about uh, <laughs> you know defend the north and stuff like that. Oh, uh, Resident and, Evil. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The that, Resident Evil basement. When thing, it, yeah. When, yeah, when it was going down, man. That was that was definitely a 2019 just like <laughs> blow up, man. You know. So, but yo, um, I have kind of two more things to discuss with y'all. Um, sure. This just popped in my head uh, a couple seconds ago. So. And, and we kind of, you know, briefly talked about this earlier. So King of Fighters 15, you know, we might see it. It might be released this year, you know, we, or in whatever capacity. Uh, what do y'all think, you know, for new players that want to get into the game? Like, how should they prepare for 15? Uh, and granted, we don't know how it's going to play. Like, it may be radically mm -hmm. different from, K from, you know, traditional KOF. It may be the same. How should a new player prepare for this game? Because I'm, I'm hearing some people say, oh, I'm just going to just wait for 15. I'm like, no, don't do just, that. Just like, play a what, lot of what, what, other what, KOFs. Yeah, but what, yeah. what, what do y'all think? You playing just, a lot of other games? Play play all of them. Like, play... Well, not, you don't have to necessarily play all of them, because let's be real. Nobody no, nobody should play 01 on purpose. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, Damn. You know, just, like, play... Play... I would say focus more towards 14, 13, and 98. And the only reason I say that is because 14 kind of melded different aspects of those three games to make 14's engine. So, so if anything, I would say those three games kind of uh, kind of set the tone for what SNK like they like SNK is outright acknowledging like, hey, these are the three KOF games that people are playing the most. Um, O2 is kind of up there as well, but because Vanilla O2 wasn't as well liked, and people really didn't get into it until UM. Can't really say the same, but it's still up there. So if you have OTUM, play that too. But just try to try to split your time between all of them because we don't know what it's going to be like. And for all we know, they could take it back to how 94 played for all we know. So we have no idea what to expect. So tr if, if you feel confident in KOF in general, not just a particular version, then you should be just fine with 15 rolls around. Yeah. Marco? I mean, I know I don't play in O2 UM recently because I only I didn't even play KOF like that until recently, mm -hmm. and then even playing just O2 UM as much as I have been in the last like two or three months, I've gotten better at 14, 13, and 98. Yeah, you could blame all of us because we kind of be like, Monta, you run these tournaments, why don't you play them? And then he's playing them now. <laughs> Thank you, Monta. <laughs> <laughs> but don't ask the uh, a new player if you want to get into KOF by all means, just um, give it a try. Play whatever KOF that you find interesting. It could be 14. It could be 13. It could be 2001. It could be KOF 12, 11. It doesn't matter. Just give KOF a shot. Because that's the one thing That's the one thing that people are not doing. Giving KOF a shot. They making, they will make judgment on first impressions. But have they played the game? No, they haven't. 
The only thing I want people to do is play KOF. Give yeah, it a fair Neo shot. Wave. I will play some Neo Wave. Don't 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 tempt me on that one. Young Geese <laughs> boys. <laughs> Young Geese. But the overall new player, you can look at like videos. I, I think Dandy J is the most popular one on different hops. I think that's a great video for people who want to get a feel of the game. And you know, character wise, find a character that you like, that you find interesting, and just take it from there. That's all I can really say. And 15, my impressions, I just want them to take their time. And I wouldn't mind it if KOF 15 takes it back to, like, you know, 98. That would be great. But we'll see. It all began in 94. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. in 95. Yeah. Yeah, well, well said, man. I would uh, prescribe any beginner, man, uh, to just, like, look at videos of KOF and then just, like, whichever one that kind of catches your eye, go ahead and play it, you know what I'm saying? You know, and you learn it as much as uh, you want or can. Oh. oh, go ahead, go ahead. Speaking speaking of KOF videos, I have to shout this, uh, I have to shout the channel out. So there's a channel on YouTube called um, Arcade Games KOF. They post first to 10s, first to 15s in various games. Like, it's mostly, um, it's mostly 98, but they sometimes do like 97, they do 02, they do... 2000 or 96 um taking um and these are and, and like it's not just random like oh they're just picking their top tier teams and just fighting each other like sometimes they're having random select only or you have to play canon teams or you have to you know you could pick one character but you have to random the other two and you, you actually see some of the best players in the world from uh from korea and china and then japan playing some of the like, craziest like combinations of characters, some low tier characters, some mid tier characters that you don't that you normally don't get a lot of shine when you watch dedicated tournament play for these games. Um, so it, it you know it, it's a really good way to like if you have a particular character that that you want to learn, just check out that channel because you can see you can see a lot of cool tricks and gimmicks that you'll probably never would have thought of like that's not listed on the wiki somewhere or something like that. Like a lot of the recent. Um, a lot of the recent Charmy Tech I've been using, I'm actually taking from Zhao Hai because he got her in a random select 98 stream. Oh, <laughs> uh, ran, he, got, he got her in a random select in a 98 set, and I was just like, wow, he's doing like all kinds of crazy stuff I never thought of before. Well said, man. Um, that channel, along with like a bunch of other ones, what's it called? Like Games Club or, or what? Uh, master fighting games and, and and even like one of my favorites is uh that that's sort of like that uh that arcade games one you're talking about uh, dz uh is um pale ko yeah that's, that channel that channel's really good too yeah. i almost forgot about that one yeah yeah they do they, they do the uns too oh yeah oh oh yeah. yeah and and they have like pretty good character compilations of like one character so if you're looking for a tech for like uh hinako you know, in O2 UM. They have a whole video of one player going through, you know, the best rounds they had in that, or for Kensu, or for like uh, Orochi Chris, or something like that. Like, that's a really good uh, resource. Um, but, yo, those, yeah, those channels are good. And there's very good players, like a lot of good Chinese and Taiwanese players and, and Japanese players. Y yeah, there's some very, very good, like, uh, you know, matches on those, man. Um, and, and there's a bunch of, like, hidden like KOF channels, you know what I'm saying, that a lot of people haven't really heard of or, or have watched that have a lot of good uh, content. I was thinking maybe sometime in the future we could do a podcast episode about, you know, our favorite YouTube channels and just like go down the list and, and just like share these uh, um, with people, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, oh, let's go to the chat real quick. Um, let's see. All right. I, I don't know if any are reading the stream, but we, we can tackle this question real quick so someone says um sorry if you covered this already i don't think we did um what are the traditional oki options in kof games i know of potentially roles for offense and guard cancels as a defense option but is there anything else unique to kof um any y'all want to um verbalize this uh on stream so they can hear it and for other people that might want to know. So explanatory, but I think the only unique thing is uh thirteen. There's gonna be a lot of like different uh different tech like uh fuzzy guarding. Um trying to think what else. 
roles are punishable, not like, you know... Yeah, in like 13, roles are punishable. I don't know how it is in the older games. And they're, they're pretty punishable. Maybe not by throws, but like you can... If you just like... If they roll at you, a lot of times you can just mash crops jab or something like that. Yeah. And even if you don't get a solid confirm, you still you still check the roll, so they're a little more afraid of doing hey, it. Hey, yeah. yo, yo, y'all remember um 1.0 and 14, how long rolls were? Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, me of that. dude I remember... Um, I used to practice this a lot. I used to practice like knocking somebody down in the corner, right? And then having the record function to roll. And then you can like do a full combo, man. Like like after they roll, just like backdash and stuff like that. And then oh man, like that some, was beautiful. Some characters some characters legit couldn't be meaty because of the timing of their of their recovery roll. It was the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> like it, it was like they either went super far or they didn't go anywhere or it was way too fast so you couldn't really time anything off. Yeah, it. It was, yeah. It was so awkward. Yeah, it was crazy, man. But yeah, I remember just like punishing people's roles so easily, dude. Like just, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was, that was definitely um, some good fun. But yeah, man. like another, I mean, another option. Like mm-hmm. if you were, I mean, the thing with Oki is that not every character is really designed with Oki in their game plan. So I mean, there's a lot of times when you get the knockdown, like some characters are better suited to just go for a safe jump. Um, other characters are better to just. Um, you know, just go for, like just go for meaties, like either a meaty projectile or, or you know, a meaty light normal. Um, projectiles in particular, like there's some characters where if you do a projectile and time it to where it'll be meaty on their wake up, you you, you force them into a kind of like an ultimatum. So like they can either block the projectile and yet they have to deal with whatever follow up pressure you add on, or they can roll to avoid it, but then they risk the roll getting punished. And so it's kind of like a I don't want to say rock paper scissors, but kind of like a um, like a guessing game, I guess you could say. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good to shit. That's good to know. Um, damn. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Somebody's uh, wrestling with the mic. Oh shit! <laughs> yes, cool wrestling. Cool wrestling. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was me. That's all good. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so we got a response. So not too different than some of the basic throw media overhead or reversal. Four defense options you would say fine in say Street Fighter. It's it's kinda like so it does KOF does follow the same like some of the same 2D rules that most fighters like Street Fighter and stuff like that have, but you, there's a lot more universal options available in KOF compared to Street Fighter. So it's like everybody has a dash, so everybody has decent at least decent movement. Um everybody has the option to roll or strike back on defense everybody has uh everybody has the option of having multiple types of jumps so it it it's kind of character dependent but the universal options make it to where like on defense most like there aren't certain characters that are just like okay if they have to block they just die like there's, there's not a lot of that in kof okay well said um Jonas uh, Brasco in the chat says, would you say that option selects are critical to learn in 14? Uh, I would say no. But if you know of some, I would say they'll help you quite a bit. The thing is, I, f- I kind of felt like as the game kind of grew, I, or I was to say went to different uh, you know, versions and stuff like that, they seem to like mess around with like the button. Uh, priority a bit like you remember how um people used to do uh kind of options to like when uh, you knock someone down hard knock down and then like you could do like an ambiguous roll or something and then or, or or if they rolled and you were like right next to them you can either like do like a cd or something like that or like a, a you could start like a you know a, a light normal or something like that and it seemed like now in this version they kind of like took out the button priority you know what i'm saying so you can't like just easily just like option select cd roll people that much anymore i, I know some characters can probably do it a little bit but it, they seem to like t- like uh, tinker with it a little bit you know um so like now you, you kind of have to like just like read a roll or something like that you know what i'm saying um, because of that um that thing that snk kind of like mess with but I wouldn't say that they're crucial, but go ahead and, and, and learn them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if, if you could, I mean, 
you know, I, I think they'll like strengthen your game quite a bit. What, what do you think, Marco? Um, I'm sorry. Like, uh, can you repeat the question? Someone in the um, chat, someone in the chat asks about option selects. Are they critical skills to learn in 14? Well, it really depends, you know, like, um, I know with higher, with a uh, higher, when I compete and I play like against, you know, high level players and stuff like that, option select is very common, I guess you could say. Like I do know with like Yuri, when she does like a hard uh, knockdown with the command grab, you do demon flip and if they roll, she does have the option of either doing stand CD or to like, you know, do stand C and I'll connect. I do know like Violin Kane uses that with Keo and then like um, M Dash uses that with uh, with Hein, Shanae. Mm -hmm. So it really depends. But from what I'm no I'm noticing when I go to like tournaments, the high level, especially in Taiwan, the new Joe World Tour, a lot of people use option selects. A lot. Okay. So I guess it depends on your level, not if you're just like a, you know, it, a new player. Exactly. But it's good to learn, you know. But like, um, as I mentioned earlier, like, I think the biggest thing is like, it's good to like, you know, learn, you'll get the information. It's just a matter about how to apply it. Because hmm. heck, sometimes I know option selects and sometimes I forget to apply it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so right. there is that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Well said. Well said. What What do you think, DZ, about option selection fourteen? Do you think they're important to learn, or is it just like, st like like steroids? <laughs> kind I, of. I, I feel like depending on the character you play, you kind of have to know them. Mostly, mostly because it's like, um, well, mo I would say it's more so necessary for um, like characters with command grabs. Um, so mostly like Athena, Clark, Vice, um, characters like that. It's where it's where because there's a lot of times, especially because most of their command grabs have really long recovery times, and, and it's like if you want to work it to where, you know, you can you can um, you can set up to where it's like okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go for a grab here, but let's say oh man, like they uh, they jumped or uh, something to that effect, or they or they're like doing some kind of reversal, you want to still be able to um, you want to still be able to not get hit by that mm. <laughs> you know um it, it it's i would say i would say it's kind of necessary but if you if you want to pace yourself while you're learning kof i wouldn't try to dive into option selects like right off the bat i would say more so focus on getting a feel for the system like the movement movement is really big in kof no matter which one you're playing movement is like the number one thing you should focus on uh perfecting mm. like before your combos before your uh like i would put her right up there with um like with your um execution i'm sorry uh yeah like with your execution like if your movement has to be on point because you if you're just if you're just uh you know hyper hopping back and forth all the time and you're not really doing anything special with it you're not really gonna last that long cool all right man great answer really really good all right, so I would say the kind of next thing uh, we're going to discuss before we get up out of here um, about 2020. So what are some things as a community, all right, that we should, uh, you know, see more? Like what, what should we do more or what would you like to see more in 2020 um, as a community? And what are some things that you'd like to see or experience less in 2020? So um why don't we start with uh mata you down to uh, tackle this one i could talk yeah oh yeah um what i want to see more i mean i guess in general i want to see more i'm gonna be a little selfish on this one i want to see more of that old school kof <laughs> i want to see more old school gameplay um at least like at least here i'm trying to I want to build up more of the 98 and 02 mm -hmm. um, UM. So I want to see, yeah, I want to see more old school gameplay. In general, I want to see more gameplay. Um, obviously, we got a lot of gameplay as is. Maybe more exhibitions could be cool. But um, I guess in general, um, just keep doing what we're doing and building up. Hopefully, we got some new heads also. Mm -hmm. I think. There's nothing really for us to stop doing. I think we just got to keep doing what we're already doing. Um, I really have no complaints. 
about anything the SNK community does. I, again, just like anything that I want to see more, it was just selfish, like purely selfish. I want to see more. I want, personally, I want to play more old school KOF. That's what I like to play the most mm. out of um, SNK titles. So that's what I want to see more of. Cool. All right. Copy that. Marco, what would you like to see more or less in the community in 2020? I just want the community to just keep doing what they're doing. Continue to grind, play, uh, bring you uh, people into the experience into KOF and build a larger community. That's pretty much what it is in the end at my end. Um, I also do have to agree with Monta. also brings see some old school 9802. Probably like, you know, commenting more O2 because I love that game. Even though it's complete shit, O2, vanilla. <laughs> but I like commentating the crap out of it because I just commented and I don't know what the hell I'm saying half the time, but it works. But I like to like, you know, see that happen. And also like, you know, um, also like, you know, get in touch with like, you know, Brooklyn video games because I know they're always grinding and giving everyone O2 action. Ooh. So I'll probably do maybe, maybe one day. I'll speak to Monta this week and maybe do a project with them. So I think honestly, O2 vanilla, as much as broken and stupid as it is, you know, it brings a lot of people together. You know, you saying that, that's definitely a place I'm going to need to visit when I'm there is uh, Brooklyn Video Games. So how far is it from the uh, next level venue? To be honest, like, you know, um, probably like, you know, in like transportation, if you take like the subway, maybe like 25, 30 minutes. Ooh, it's kind of okay. like, but if anything, like if I'm there, I could just drive you there. It's like. Word. 10 okay. 15 minutes yeah it's fine oh I even, it's actually not hard to get to though um like there's a train that's close to the next level that leaves you like four minute walk away from brooklyn video games only around like five or six stops mm. okay um so i could really i think to me it felt more like a 15 minutes 15 minute train ride you just got to get lucky with the train exactly the train can be a can be either with you or against you yeah like you can actually get there faster by train if you get that lucky then you can by driving. You just have to get lucky. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's not hard to get from next level. So I would say if you can, I would say go visit it if you can. Like, you'll know exactly where Brooklyn Video Games is. Like, honestly, you'll just see uh, Neo Geo cabinets and just Modelos. You know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would lie to you, but I'm not. Right, Monto? I mean, I got offered a bunch of them when I was there, that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. I had them all in the back. Oh, man. <laughs> Okay. Is the, and you guys see a lot of Modelos at Noodle Oh, Bell. man. I, that's something we cannot control. Yeah. Uh, Lunar Phase got is what introduced me to Modelos last year. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I drank maybe like, what, three of them? And I was like, hmm, okay, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and and apparently, that, apparently that made me a... Um, a permanent old school KOF player now. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, they they could drink. You know, God bl God bless them. You know, they could drink. I don't know how, but they drink a lot. <laughs> Word. Mm -hmm. All right, Dizzy. What about you? What are some things in the community you want to see uh, more or less of this year, twenty twenty? What I want to see less of? More, hmm. more or less of? I mean, you can more get to the less. less of. Okay. Um. Well, let's start off with the less. Get it out of the way. I I, I don't I don't want to see people. Um. I don't want to see people bashing other KOF games. And when I say that, everybody knows what I'm talking about, where we have the 13 purists, then we have the 98 and 02 purists, and even the 14 purists. It's like, let's, let's all be happy that KOF even has the relevance that it has right now. Um, I love how you say purists. I know who you're talking about. Well, there's a lot of people I'm talking about on all yeah. sides. But, but, but listen, like on all sides of the argument, because I... <laughs> In the past, I I've you, girl, been, go ahead. <laughs> in the past, I've been guilty of it myself. But like when I think about it in the grand scheme of things, it's like we the, every KOF is different for a reason. Like let's take mm -hmm. it back to the '90s where they were they were pushing out a KOF every single year, and they managed to make every one feel unique um, because they knew it's like okay, well, there's some we want to make people keep coming back to these games, especially because not every character is going to be in every game. Not every game is going to play the same way. Uh, the list goes on. So it's like, you know, if you if you have somebody who plays a lot of 14, but then you have someone like me who plays a lot of 98 and 02 because my favorite teams are in those, it's like, okay, well, we don't, you know, it's like, oh, well, why are you playing that game? Because I'm playing the characters I love or because 
I, I have a lot more fun playing this particular game because of its system. Um, KOS is KOS. I don't I don't care which one it is. Um, like we talk, we talk a lot of shit about uh, you know 01 and 12 because yes they were really bad. But hey, if somebody fires it up and if they can find a second person to play with them, more power to them. They can go ahead and play that. Um, and then I mean something I want to see more of. I want to see, I want to see more people give KOF a shot. Not even just KOF, but just like KOF, Sam Show, whatever. Um, because a lot of these games, like, get thrown by the wayside either because they're too hard or, or well, too hard in the sense of I don't feel like learning it, or um, they don't look like a certain standard that people should hold. I don't understand why uh, I don't understand why fourteen got left by the wayside because of how it looked when Marvel Infinite came out looking worse and people <laughs> flocked to that. Um, so you know, it's like if you're gonna if you. If you're not, not everybody has to play KOF and love it. Everything ain't for everybody. But if you if you go, if you at least try it, and then you're like, eh, it's not for me, and then you stop playing, I can't really be mad at you because at least you tried it. But if you just never decided to sit down and play a SNK game in your life, and you're just like, you're just bashing it because you can, I feel like that's kind of pathetic. So that's something I want to see less of as well. But I also want to see more people giving these things a shot. Damn, well said, well said, man. Damn, those are some things I was gonna say. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Dizzy. Um, I, I don't like when people bash other KOF games too, man. Cause like, it's like, dude, it's like, it's like we're all in the same family, man. We, you know, if you play KOF, you know what I'm saying, and you play different games, and like, you know, you you kind of bash other people for playing other KOF games. Like, come on, that's not that's not good. You know what I'm saying? Cause like. Then you're kind of like creating, you know, uh, division, you know, already in a small group. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's never good to just like it, it, it's already us against the world. Games. It's already us against the world when it comes yeah. to SN, like the SNK community in general. We don't need subdivisions of our community going at each other's throats. Exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Like it's you know, like it's easy. Like it's very easy to just like you know give uh, you know a certain game props. You can be critical of it but you don't have to like bash it and say it's like you know a piece of shit or anything like that or, you know like i'm really critical of 12 you know what i'm saying and sometimes i might joke around about it but like you know i understand like it's, it's still kof you know what i'm saying it existed people gave it a shot you know and, and that's that you know but at the same time like yeah people just bashing like just openly bashing other games and stuff like that yeah that 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 doesn't make any sense and, and i did see some of that in you know, uh, 2019 and, and stuff, you know, so that that's always like, you know, uh, not good. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that has to uh, cease. <laughs> um, some things I want to see a little bit more of. I, I kind of want to see a little bit more of um, tournaments kind of showcasing like exhibitions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand, like, you know, people like to play in the brackets and stuff like that, but like, what's wrong with just like having like a like a marquee, you know, and and just like putting up some names of people that have like rivalries, or you know, what I'm saying, or you know, um, or, or or you know, like some sort of like a high profile money match. It doesn't even matter like if they are like experts at the game, you know, what I'm saying. I I still think like having some sort of like um, attention on just like. Just an exhibition match or some sort of personal match or something uh, should be um, tried out, you know, in, in 2020, you know, because a lot of people like brackets aren't for everybody. I feel like when you go to an event, you know, like as I got older and, and started going to more events, I started just like playing casuals, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, I challenge people to first of fives, first of tens and stuff like that just for fun. You know, and and I enjoy that more than the uh, the freaking bracket. You know, so I definitely think events should try to do more. You know, um, like exhibitions and, and stuff like that. Um, some other things in 2020 I want to see more. Um, yeah, keep streaming. More people streaming. More people um, kind of like raiding other people's streams to like help people grow and, and stuff like that. One thing I have kind of noticed. Um, when it comes to like the FGC in general is that a lot of people, we, we don't have the mindset of like, 
like content creators. You know, we have mindset of just like people that just want to just like destroy other people and kick people's asses no matter what. So because of that, we can't like like we have trouble kind of like growing to how certain other content creators are. Like you know how like the big content creators they have like thousands and thousands of like viewers and followers and stuff like that, but you know, you know they they don't really know too much about the game. You know they you know they're they're li- their uh, level is kind of you know a little low. You know when it comes to gameplay, but. You know their level when it comes to like content creation and growth is like astronomical. So I, I would kind of want to see that for fifteen. I, I want to see you know a bit more people um, pushing a game to people that have never played KOF or never even seen KOF before. That way, you know, we can kind of just like start funnel- funneling some uh, some growth. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I, I definitely want to see a, a bit more of that in um, in, in 2020. Some people kind of uh, you know. Um, really just helping spread the game to different avenues that we haven't before and uh just just sharing it with people that you know haven't ever heard of you know kof or fatal fury characters or snk characters and stuff like that we got a little taste of that with um you know terry being in smash and stuff like that and and even um like with um you know maximilian you know streaming a bunch of like kof 13 you know, a lot of people getting in, interested in, in that because of his platform. You know, I, I think that's really good. We, we need more of that for 15 if we kind of want to see the game, you know, grow a little bit more and, and uh, you know, sustain itself. Um, but now as far as like longevity, even with 14, like like we we're kind of talking about before, like people streaming quite a bit more now. There's like online tournaments, you know, like there was like the beginners tournament. For online um, Steam players. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, I'm 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 glad that more people are playing on Steam. I, I know you see that now, Marco. Like, there's more people playing on PC um, uh, for KOF uh, 14 because it, it was kind of like on life support for a little bit, but like it, it looked like I know the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you know you and, and a bunch of other people, you know, really just kind of like helped that quite a bit so yeah that that was um that was very good that (laughs) y'all jump started yeah you know it's crazy like i I streamed i think it was yesterday day before and we had like over 60 people i'm like wow just for 14 that's amazing yeah yeah that that's absolutely great dude that's that's so yeah yeah like good (laughs) good ups to y'all for people um playing on steam and stuff and even in our discord there's people um want to play on pc more and i'm like damn <laughs> who's left for 14 like did people's like psn run out or something what's going on you know but that's 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 good though that's very very good but um mm-hmm. yeah let's let's just keep things kind of like going man in in this direction so when uh 15 hits you know we have a good uh basis and a good foundation you know um to kind of keep the game um growing and and sustaining itself you know because like every fighting game kind of has like a little bit of a you know, a, 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 like I don't say a decline or a plateau or something like that, but it, it kind of goes like you know up and down in waivers and stuff like that. So like, let's just kind of like keep it steady, um, you know, for fifteen in uh, twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. So before we get up out of here, man, uh, anybody has any like parting? Um, not shout outs. We're gonna do shout outs in a little bit. Any any other things they wanna like mention about twenty twenty um, that you kind of like looking forward to or want to see more or less? Like I said, or Anything that kind of like popped up mind, you know, regarding, um, you know, this whole big topic for 2020. Anybody can grab the mic. Um, I mean, shout outs to just the community in general. Like, there's a lot of people who have been in this community for decades, like not like like going all the way back to playing in arcades or playing online on uh, Kyle Era, Fightcade, and GGPO. Um, but then there's also a lot of newcomers, too. And, and I mean, those of you who just got into uh, KOF, Sam Show, whatever SDK game over the last few years, uh, thank, thanks for sticking around so far. I mean, we, we I feel like our community is growing. I remember there used to be a meme where they said that there wasn't a KOF player under the age of 25. I think that's false now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, so shout outs to, to those who uh, have been playing, just started playing, who will continue playing. Um, also, shout outs to our community leaders, our community pillars, 
uh, TOs, content creators, anybody anybody who's giving SNK a platform is a okay in my book. Cool, great, great, well said. All right, so I think it's time uh, for some uh, shout outs. I know you kind of gave a little bit of a shout out, DZ, but I know you I know you got more shout outs. But um, why don't we start with uh, Monta? Uh, you got any shout outs to throw? Uh, to the uh, people listening and watching? To the people? Yes, sir. And the listening and watching, we'll shout out to... I already shouted out so many people, I'm going to shout out again. Um, first things first, shout out to Brooklyn Video Games. Shout out to Esteban, who owns Brooklyn Video Games. Um, great place to be. If you like KOF, if you like classic KOF, go, go through. If you like classic games in general, just games in general. Very good um, store, just the get your game fixed essentially like personally i like being in there a lot and even if you want and if you want to do trade-ins i would just suggest to go in there you're going to get a better deal than you would at like a GameStop or anywhere else so yeah shout outs to brooklyn video games um shout outs to cruise cruise link for all the retro cruise link arturo beast um i fix retro ben fong Every, they know they all know who they are shout outs to all the retro heads out there like Dreamcast HDMI. Now they're doing like game. They have like this GameCube box now and everything too. I think re- the retro stuff has just been amazing in 2019. Now I go into 2020. I like I have so many different, <laughs> so many different things are coming out with. It's just insane. Um, I'll give Marco Marco a shout out for being a G. The, <laughs> the hotel stuff and being as yeah. supportive as he is. Shout outs to Rome also for. Many of the same reasons, being as supportive as he is, promoting my pr- marketing and promoting my event without me even really, a- really asking him to. <laughs> they literally, they'd be like, "Yo, you send me stuff." Um, shout out to Monta's girlfriend for keeping him in check. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, oh. I love you, fam. All right, real talk. Um, um all right, shout out to Datagram for always streaming S and K. At lunar at lunar face events like you know dual moon full moon all the events shout out to datagram and the lunar face cast and monta like i mentioned we're literally reviving snk from a guy who mentioned i want to do a snk event you know just one day and look where we are now second year happening and um shout out to uh you know Texas Crew, shouts to Game Goons, shouts to Game Goons sending Matador to Lunar Belt. So I'm Ooh, looking forward yeah. to that. Oh yeah. Um yeah. Sadly, shout outs to uh Tam. He's a pain in my ass, but shout outs to Tam. Um everybody, East Coast uh community, the S N K scene, and Dream Cancel. You guys been here for like ever, so shout out to you guys. Like I found Dream Cancel when I started thirteen, you know, like joining on the forums and look where we are now, podcasting. Word. Thank wow. you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Always a pl- always a pleasure, fam. Always a pleasure. Indeed, indeed. Dizzy Kujaku, shout outs. Uh let's see. Shout outs to Lunaphase, Dream Cancel, Kick Punch Block, uh like all the organizations that um just do their best to give back to the community, whether it's by uh whether it's by hosting events, content creating, um or even just or even just social media presence. Like I, I've seen um I've seen organizations uh, like go out of their way to um, do things on Twitter and Facebook that just give SNK games characters things like that uh, a platform. Like um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen that um, that um, that KLS Music account. Like they tweet a different song from a game like every single day. Um, like things like that. Um, I've also seen seen threads on Twitter where people will literally go through every character in KOF like in in order of appearance, and and uh, like just detail information about them. So, um, our like our presence is growing. Our presence is growing one hundred percent, and um, I'm 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 here for it. Like, twenty twenty and beyond is looking really good, not just for the company but for the community. Cool, man. All right. Thank you so much. That was really, really dope. All right. Um, shout out to Mayan. I would say, you know, shout out to all y'all for joining um, the call, um, joining the discussion panel. Uh, thank y'all so much as always. Um, 
damn. Like again, like shout outs to all the different organizations, man, that are like helping the SNK scene. Uh, shout outs to SNK uh, themselves, you know. Um, uh, big shout outs to all the uh, local KOF scenes uh, in North America and abroad. Um, thank y'all so so much for you know keeping things going. Shout outs to everybody in our Discord server. Um, ever since like Terry has been in Smash, uh, things have been kind of growing in our server, and um, you know more people have been streaming and, and whatnot, and you know SNK having their own uh, Twitch and their own uh, Discord. You know that that's always pretty dope. So uh, thank you so much for that. And that's really it. So we're gonna go back to the uh, promo and plugs real quick. Gonna go through these as fast as we can. Again, hit us up on Patreon if you want to get early access to our videos, podcasts, uh, online lobbies, and whatnot. Big props to everybody in our Discord server. Thanks for everybody helping out with our wiki. King of Fire to 15. I don't know. I, I wonder when we're going to see some more uh, information for that. Bunch of tournaments this <laughs> uh, February. Got Hyperdrive. Oh, man. You know, we got Frosty Frostings. We got Winter Showdown. Uh, we have uh, Vegas Cup. We got Lunar Bout is the one that I'm going to and um, focusing on um, that we're partnering up with. Um, yo. Really, 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 really dope. Really, really dope. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So again, thank y'all so much uh, for joining uh, this podcast. Really, really appreciate it. Um, we're gonna come back pretty soon. We, we should probably have another podcast before uh, Lunar about to kind of hype that up quite a bit. So yeah, that's about it. And this concludes another installment of the Dream Cancel podcast. My name is Desmond, the administrator. Dreamcancel.com. And until next time, keep playing, keep learning, and have fun. Peace.